Live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, Veeam, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco Live 2018 in Europe. Kicking off 2018 here in Europe is Cisco's annual event. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE with Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon. Our next guest is Todd Brennan, who's the marketing director at Cisco. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great, thanks for coming on. You guys Absolutely. announced HyperFlex before the show. We did. And a lot of cloud happening here in the keynote. Seeing IOT, yep. oh, security number one, obviously. Sure. Security, security, it's always going to be number one. But the other themes are obviously IOT and multi-cloud. Multi-cloud. Huge conversations, both developing yep. rapidly yep. in kind of its own way. Well, that's crucial for us, because you know, we talk about HyperFlex 3.0, a lot of cool features that we're building into that, but the scope for us is much, much broader because of the multi-cloud piece, right? I mean, that's reality for our customers. They've told us very, very clearly, I'm going to use multiple public clouds, but I'm also going to have to get my on-prem side of it, so we, we tell them absolutely good multi-cloud starts at home, right, with platforms yeah. like, with HyperFlex, and that's and that's that's exactly the way we've, we've brought it together. So we talk about a kind of a, a very modest aspiration with this is we want to help customers power any application on any cloud at any scale. Well, take a minute before we get started. Let's have some questions. Yep. What is HyperFlex 3.0 for the folks watching? Sure. What is it? So we introduced HyperFlex. It's our hyper-converged platform built on UCS. We acquired a company called SpringPath. They brought in a, a, a purpose-built log-structured file system for the cluster, and we combine these things together to create HyperFlex. So it's really unique in the sense that well, let me back up. I'd say a lot of people ignore how crucial a, a file system and a network are to a clustered system. Kind of, you know, kind of goes without saying. But a lot of the focus has been on, okay, what's the individual node in that stack look like? But we look at it much more at the cluster level. And so our uniqueness is that we've engineered all this thing together. So we brought that out in 2016. Last year, really, we focused on performance, 40 gig, all flash, um, opened up the network pipes, and then this year is really about our multi-cloud integration and then additional features that we're bringing in to support more workloads, Hyper-V support, containers, right? So 3.0 is really just filling in a lot of the features that we need to really make this a ideal platform for multi-cloud. Yeah. Todd, you know, we, we've, we've tracked UCS since the, the early days. Um, UCS really, you know, you know, created and led the whole converged infrastructure 10. When it we did. heard about CI though, yep. it's really about simplification. It's sure. infrastructure, yep. it's that next step. Hyperconverged, a lot of the things you were talking about there, it's, it's about cloud and the underlying platform, and while CI can be used for that, seems like a different discussion. Can you give us a little bit, compare contrast as to Absolutely. what you see? Well, I mean, the converged infrastructure, you know, we started that way back in the day with vBlock, right, and VCE, and then FlexPod, VersaStack, FlashStack, there's lots of, lots of different uh, storage partnerships that we have we can bring customers, right? But, and, and private cloud has been a big workload for those infrastructure com components. You know, it's really just a storage question of how you want to uh, address that component, but it all revolves around the operating model. So our mission is, look, we've got a huge install base of customers that are used to acquiring and deploying pre-engineered chunks of infrastructure like a, a VX block or a flex pod, what have you. We need to continue to serve them while they also evaluate where hyperconvergence might fit in the equation as well, and how do we offer those both up with a common set of policy and management, right, with UCS management, with Intersight. So, you know, we, we think that these are going to coexist for quite some time, and customers are going to have to decide, you know, how, how they want to use those different types of infrastructure, but ultimately, it's just about the workload, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Cisco and its yeah. storage partners have billions of reasons why Certainly. you're going to keep selling CI Certainly. for a while. Yep. Help connect the dots, though. You talked about that operating model in the yep. keynote this morning, big focus on multi-cloud. Certainly. And things like, you yep. know, we talked to AppD at yep. AWS reInvent. Uh, yep. You know, how does the kind of the public cloud mesh with uh, these other solutions? So, so one of the things that, uh, that, that we're announcing here at the show is the, is the cloud uh, our Cisco container platform, right? And that's an example of how we're going to work with Google to create an integrated stack, right? Focused initially around Kubernetes. And we have HyperFlex as an infrastructure component under that. And that's, you know, for, for people that are really accelerating their application development or maybe they're modernizing older workloads with containers, we're going to provide that element. But the true multi-cloud functionality is what we do with things like Cloud Center. So that was our clicker acquisition. Allows us to profile workloads, take them out to the cloud, multiple public clouds. So for us, when we talk about HyperFlex as a platform for multi-cloud, it's those integrations with 
Cloud Center, but then also AppD, which is hugely important because, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you've got applications now that are distributed across on-prem and multiple public clouds potentially, right? So maybe you've got a front end out in the public cloud, customer data or business logic on-prem. How do you keep track of the performance of that yeah. collection of, of, of functions and, and, and systems that are running independently? and you have to do that with something like AppD. So we have a lot of the software components to help customers really get their multi-cloud so going. Bring it back to Hyperflex, yep. my, my understanding, not just virtual environment anymore, you're also doing containers, and Absolutely. that tied into yeah. that multi-cloud piece. So, so a couple important things with this 3.0 release, uh, we're bringing in support for Hyper-V, for customers who want to do different multi, uh, hypervisors, and then we developed a, uh, a, a persistent storage plug-in into the file system for those stateful workloads that are going to be in containers. So again, with Kubernetes, as developers want to go out and do pod requests, basically self-service volumes uh, on the Hyperflex storage environment, that's huge. And so we've opened it up you know, to two more classes of workloads right there. I mean, what aren't you doing? You've got decentralized apps. Is there going to be a Cisco coin in the future? <laughs> I think, uh, There's I, a rumor I, going around. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't speak to our, our <laughs> cryptocurrency strategy. That's outside of my domain. And probably coming. Yeah. I mean, decentralized apps, again, on the horizon. Again, another, yeah. another future thing you guys are positioned for. In all seriousness, though, I want to put a plug in for uh, Stu's Wikibon team. They came out with a true private cloud report uh, yeah. recently last year. Yep. Really kind of the only ones looking at this way, but it really is interesting. I want to get your comment on this, because we get 100 of events a year. Last year was over 100, I think 30. And what we've observed is the same thing that's happening here. DevNet's got a lot of traction. You got DevNet create more of an open source, mm -hmm. cloud native focus. Sure. You're seeing the enterprises getting their act done at home, inside the premise. That's right. So it's not so much they're moving to the cloud. Yeah, some stuff's going in the cloud, but it's, they're kind of cleaning up the house first, going cloud yep. ops on premise. That's right. And then as a preparation, so all the spend and all the intention is really on the on yes. the private cloud, they call it true private cloud. You, do you see the same thing? And, absolutely. And is that a stepping stone to the cloud? Uh, that, absolutely, and that's exactly, that's informed everything that we've done here in this latest, this past year, really, of development around Hyperflex, is our IT customers telling us, look, I've got the developers my new constituent. As much as I need to maintain shrink-wrapped apps or legacy workloads for the core business, the developer is really my customer now, and I have to provide infrastructure on-prem that behaves like the cloud in terms of yeah. infrastructure as code and being able to do things like we're doing with this, with this Kubernetes environment where customers, you know, where the developers can withdraw the resources they need, turn them back in, and the IT team can get out of the way. That's yeah. hugely important. And the other thing we were observing on our opening this morning when we were commenting on the keynote and mm -hmm. some of the trends here is that Cisco is moving up the stack pretty rapidly over the years. This year more yes. than ever you can start to see yes. a clear line of sight that it's not just network plumbing, although that's pretty critical. Um, but with Kubernetes and the growth, you mentioned Google, it's pretty interesting. A renaissance is going on in the software world, certainly with open yep. source. Yep. You have app developers which are like just classic building software apps. Mm -hmm. Then you've got engineering Software engineering, so you know, I use that term software engineering as a throwback to the 80s when I graduated my CS degree. That was what you called yourself when you got a job. You were a software engineer. Yeah. You have network engineers, so you're seeing a line of under the hood engineering with software and networks yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And then above Kubernetes, you're seeing just, hey, I just want to program, just Absolutely. give me some functions. Absolutely, yeah, and, and it's, it's the IT generalists that are emerging as the heroes here that have to understand, okay, how do I build that on-prem platform how do I have the capability to get my developers out to the public cloud as and when they need to and it makes sense or, or you know, potentially bring things back? And you're right, and then on the development side, they don't want to have to worry about the mechanics of that. So to the degree we can enable, simple, uh, enable our IT customer to provide that service, yeah. but also simplify that for yeah. them, all right, talk, is, about is your, talk about your yeah. posture to those yeah. two different personas, because sure. I mean, you guys just provide the network in the old days, yeah. and app developers programmed on it. They get the storage, it produces some storage. Yeah. Now you got to lean in towards the network engineers, which now software engineers, under the hood, yeah. and then you got to lean into the app developers and enable them to be successful. How are you attacking those, not attacking, how are you sure. servicing and leaning well, into we, those we, groups? We brought the storage and the computing experts into the fold with UCS, right, nine years ago. But now when you look at our acquisition of AppD, that's where we really start to take care of the, the application owner, be it the developer or the business owner for the, for the application, and allowing them to kind of see across on-prem, out in the public cloud, how do I ensure that I'm going to stay out of trouble, and if, and if something goes wrong, I know exactly where in that constellation of services the problem resides. So, so AppD is critical in that sense. So they fill a big hole. Absolutely, because that, that's how we can, all this comes together to power workload, power power business service, okay. applications are the, are, are, are the heart of new business. Todd, right? Todd, 
what about from a training perspective? Cisco sure. Live's always been a show where Absolutely. people get their certifications, yes. they build their careers on this stuff. Yep. It's changing so fast. How are you keeping kind of the, the, the training tracks and giving that you know, career help uh, to, to, to all the people that so we're adding for a we're adding the pillars for all the things we're talking about, the multi-cloud software portfolio, new, new infrastructure components like Hyperflex, those are all being built into our training regimen and also our training partners, they can take that out and scale it for us. So, all right, so you yep. just to connect the dots on what I was finishing up for, yep. okay, network engineers, software engineers under the hood, app developers at AppD, you guys have a good solid footing there. Yep. Good, good approach. Multi-cloud. Yes. Is that the Kubernetes, is that the secret sauce to multi-cloud in your opinion? And, or how do you guys look at multi-cloud and how do you talk to your customers about it? Well, we talk about, I mean, we, the, the data is pretty clear. Customers want to be able to use multiple public clouds and they want to be able to evaluate them. So I think the center of our strategy, you know, we have our multi-cloud portfolio, how we organize all these things. The cloud consume pillar that's really comprised of AppD, which we talked about, but also Cloud Center. And so Cloud Center is a tool that allows our customers basically profile an application and then go understand what's it going to cost me and what are the different attributes of these public cloud services and, and which one matches up the best. So I'd say that's the center of the strategy. Obviously, you know, particularly around containers, but more workloads in the future, Kubernetes becomes a much bigger. So orchestration's pretty key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. orchestration's essential. And, we, and, 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 and it's not just um, in, a, in a pure software context, but how do we hook down into infrastructure? So we've already built this programmable infrastructure, so how do we expose those yeah. knobs and dials yeah. to orchestration engines so that we're not just virtualizing, but we're actually optimizing the infrastructure. And that's the beautiful thing about serverless and function-based uh, yeah. software called. Okay, so now I've heard about this D-Cloud. What mm. is D-Cloud? So D-Cloud's basically a, a demo environment that our engineering team can use and our partners can use to demo software. So for example, we launched our, our cloud management platform for UCS and Hyperflex last fall. We call it Intersight. So software like that, you know, software becomes central to our strategy, D-Cloud becomes the way that we so show that. So customers can come in and play on that, and partners? Right, well, yeah, partners, partners and our sales teams can take but customers But not customers? Uh, I don't believe there's an end user okay. entrance to that yet. So it's like a sandbox yeah. with But I could be wrong, yeah, I'm not a D-Cloud All right, so expert. for the folks watching, what's yeah. different this year at Cisco uh, Live in Europe uh, from other shows? Is there anything that stands out to you Def around this year? Definitely the multi-cloud theme, and, and, we're, and we're hearing that from customers. They don't, you know, there's always been the, the question of what type of infrastructure should I provision for different workloads, but it's really moved that past that to here's the workload spectrum I need to support, what are the tools you're going to give me for that on-prem, how can you help me get to the cloud? And, and I think the other thing, you know, n more narrowly speaking, hyperconvergence is really turning the corner in terms of adoption, right? Yeah. So when we first, you know, we, we weren't the first ones to arrive, at the hyper-convergence party in the industry by any means, but we brought the keg, right? Yeah. So when we showed up, the party kind of got started. We yeah. think we brought the complete answer, and now we're seeing as more and more workloads can go onto an HCI platform, yeah. the adoption's starting to, yeah. we're, and we're seeing larger organizations bring it on, yeah. both in the core and out at the edge. Right. So those so are a couple big Todd, any bold predictions? Will, will Cisco be number three in HCI by the end of 2018? Yes, because we already are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we already are. So today it's a, it's a three horse race right okay. now. So it's, it's a Dell, Nutanix, Cisco yeah. uh, in the latest IDC numbers. So Still I think by the end, I'd, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see number two within uh, you know, a type of a time frame. I'll, I'll give you a number two within six quarters, how about that? And Stu wants to know what you're going to do with all that cash that you bring over from uh, to the U.S. <laughs> Which I heard you're going to buy. I heard Chuck talking yeah. about investing in employees, so I hope <laughs> okay. it's some of that. No, <laughs> I, no guys, I, I think Chuck's already you know, kind of laid it out, right? You know, we got our investors, we've got potential things we can do, yeah. you know, bringing in new technology, so he's, he's really laid yeah. that out. Todd, final question for you to end sure. the segment. As the personnel change, especially the disruption of the cloud and the evolution of the renaissance that's coming with software, DevNet, DevNet Create, doing some great stuff as an indicator of what's coming. Sure. How is the role of the network, your target customers, who's been loyal Cisco uh, Net MVP all these years, yep. and you got storage guys, yep. interdisciplinary's been a big thing. What skill sets do you see evolving for that Cisco hero out there? What's the, what's the trend that you can talk it, to? It, it's the ability to automate. It's the ability to take advantage of some of the technologies we're bringing in terms of assurance. It's, it's how do you bring all of that insight that resides in the, in the, in the network, in the telemetry, in that data, how do you bring that out and use it right in a way that can help yeah. the business? So I think for our core audience, for those folks you talk about, it's how do, I, how do I become much more adept at bringing these pieces together in an automated way? But then how do I take advantage of some of the things that are available to me now in terms of bringing the power of 
data, you know, analytics, AI into an IT context and take advantage of those things for all the different things you can imagine. Security, yeah. assurance, right, et cetera. So the big thing then, just to summarize, if I hear you correctly, the difference this year is that you got AppD and you got end-to-end -end DevOps. Yeah, I think it's a multi, you know, our multi-cloud story has really gelled over the past year and, and now we're bringing it in to the context of on-prem infrastructure in addition to the public cloud side of it. So I think that's the that's awesome. big news from the data center side. Todd Brandon, who's the marketing director at Cisco. Here inside theCUBE, we are in Barcelona, live coverage, two days, wall to wall. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, more live coverage theCUBE after this short break. <laughs>